Okay, guys, thanks for having me today. Um, our topic today is asphalt mat uniformity. Um, before we get into that detail, let's first look at a job mix formula. Next. So what we're looking at here is a half inch surface mix design. This is the job mix formula. We have from half inch aggregate all the way down to uh, 200 fines. We have 4.9% binder content and the mix temperature is 300 degrees F. So with that mix design, our bulk density would be approximately 120 foot per cubic, 120 fungs per cubic foot. So when we're laying, when we're paving, what are we doing? We're laying a hot mixture of that aggregate, sand, asphalt, cement, and air voids to a certain width and depth. Then we will compact it with a screen. <clears throat> but that mix design drives what we re refer to as the mix internal frictional resistance. So if at any time that job mix formula change for whatever reason, that mix internal frictional resistance will change. And that will impact discrete compaction and it would also impact the roller compaction. How would that change? That would change if we segregate the material. So it's important that we manage segregation, which is also what's driving the surface uniformity. So in this case, let's say discrete compacts the mix at, mix at 85%, leaving about 15% air void. And then the roller comes by and compacts it to 93%, let's say, which would leave about 7% air void. So at any time for that screed setup, for that roller chain train, if the mix internal frictional resistance change, then the compaction will change. Next. So let's look at a hopper insert. There is a material and a hopper insert in the paper. <clears throat> if you look closely, we have segregation going on in the hopper insert itself, where the larger zones are separating from the fines. And you will see the blemish on the upper right-hand corner picture, which most of you probably know looks like end of load segregation. But the mix on the sidewall of the insert, the two sidewall, will flow down to the outer conveyor chain and leave a blemish under the bearing hanger. So that would be referred to as a continuous streak, whereas the picture up on top will refer to as blotchy type of segregation. So that's surface uniformity that's driven by segregation. Next. Now, if you look at the hopper in rolling will stop only when the larger that's why it's critical to have the right insert to minimize that Now here we're looking at surface blemish due to screed adjustment. So because we have three screed sections, we have a main screed, we have an extension screed, and we have a left and right extension, sorry. So if the adjustments are not correct, the each extension should be could be compacting that material different from the main screed, leaving blemish that are related to screed adjustment. So we'll come back to these two discussions later. Next. Now let's look at surface un uniformity that could be created by the five forces that holds the screed to grade. We all know there's five force that holds the screed to grade. The screed floats in the asphalt like a water skier. So for today, 20 minutes that we have, we will only focus on what can each one of these force, how can each one of these force create surface blemish? Next. So let's come back to the pull force. Why do we use a material transfer? We use a material transfer for non-contact continuous paving, but also to maintain material consistency. So exchange truck without stopping or bumping the paver, but most importantly, to maintain material consistency. That means we need to control our gradation and temperature segregation. So good rule of thumb here is when you use a material transfer, keep the material transfer half full at least and keep the insert in the paver half full at least. And if we look at this video, you will see why. Next. That's the material as you saw. So 
in the past, we never want to stop because this creed settles that we know. And when we take off, depending on how long we stop, the material get cold. So if you look back at the job, 300 degrees, now we're probably sitting at 275 degrees. So the mix internal frictional resistance change and more than likely when we take off, we'll have a hump. But today's paver design have features such as creed hold that prevents this creed from settling and screed freeze that prevents this creed from giving you a hump because of the cold mix when you take off. Most of the newer paver designs today have that. The other is the material force. They have the material force. We must keep the auger and conveyor turning consistently, covering about half the auger shaft, and that way we maintain the material consistency and minimize auger and conveyor segregation. Next. The third is, is the weight of the screed. <clears throat> so we all use extendable screeds. They're front mount screeds, they're rear mount screeds. They all have their challenges in maintaining or maintain uniformity and avoid blemishes. And that's why it's important for us to discuss screed adjustments, which we will do with shortly. Next. So the last two forces, the compacting force and the frictional force. The compacting force and the frictional force has all to do with the mix design or the job mix formula. So because we have three screed sections, it also has to, we also have to ensure that each screed section is compacting the material the same to avoid blemishes, which could be confused with segregation. So let's look at screed adjustments first. Next. Next. No. So here we're looking at the main screed. If you look at the strike off, in front of the strike off, we have zero compaction. The trailing edge should be the last thing touching your material. So from the trailing edge to the point of strike off is our screed compaction. So <clears throat> now let's look at all three screed sections. Next. In this case, we're looking at a rear mount screed. On plane A, which is the leading edge of the screed, so all three screed sections must share the material off on plane A as we move forward. Plane B is the trailing edge. So if we have a 10 foot screed and we're paving uh, 12 foot wide, each extension is out one foot. For us to have consistent mat depth from end gate to end gate, all three screed sections trailing edge, which is plane B, must be on the same level, same height. To have uniform compaction, all three leading edge must share the material off at the same point, which will be plane A, and that will give us uniform compaction and uniform surface texture. Now let's look at next. Let's look at the uh, front mount screed. A little bit more challenge here because the extension is much narrower than the main screed, so the angle of attack of the extension must be a little bit steeper than the main. But as long as the trailing edges, plane B, are on the same height, and the leading edge, plane A, are sharing the material off at the same height, then the screed compaction under each section will be the same. So <clears throat> let's look at some scenarios where they are not. Next. So in this case, all the extensions are adjusted correctly, and we have a zero blemish pavement. Next. Now we're looking at a rear mount screed where the trailing edges are on the same plane. So if I put a straight edge across the mat, it will be flat. But if you look at the left and right hand extension, the material is being shared off where the blue line is. So the difference between the blue line and the main screed red line is how much more material is getting compacted under the extension screed. And you can see from the picture, the texture is different. Now in this case, depending on how far off it is, we may see some looser texture inside the edge of the main screed, which may appear to be uh, segregation but it is not segregation, it is compaction at a different rate. We have more in-place density, less air voids have to be pushed out under the extension screed compared to the main screed. So after rolling, we will not have, if we put a straight edge again, it will not be flat. Next. Again, different surface texture, different blemish, different uniformity, but strictly from screed adjustment, not segregation. Again, if you look at the leading edge of the extension blue line, between the blue line and the first red line is how much more material getting compacted under the extension screen. So again, we may have 90% density under the extension, maybe 85 under the main. So we can push more air pockets out under the main screen when the roller comes by. And then if we put a straight edge after it's rolled, 
there will not be a flat pavement. Again, it may appear to be segregation, but it's not segregation. It's, it's a surface blemish because of incorrect screen adjustment. Next. Now, here we can see consistent surface texture from end gate to end gate. So a good rule of thumb to ensure that your extension match height is correct and not creating overcompaction or the angle of attack is overcompacting, a slight line at the edge of the main screed is a good indication, especially with front mount screed, that the match height is correct and the surface texture being uniform is a good indication that our density is uniform from end gate to end gate. Next. So here we're looking at blemishes strictly driven by screed adjustment. And I would like to come back to this slide after we look at segregation. So keep this in mind. We'll be right back to it. Next. So we said to manage the last two force, the R force and the, the uh, compacting force and the F force, we need to make sure our adjustment is correct, which we just went through. We also said that we need to make sure we have material consistency. So for a given screed setting, our mat depth remains the same. The only way we can change the mixed consistency after it leaves the plant is if we segregate it. So let's look at some possible segregation. Next. Next. Okay, here we're looking at two types of segregation. We have gradation segregation where the larger stone separating from the smaller stone and fines. And that could only happen during handling when we create a, a, a slope surface or a pile. If we have gradation segregation, then we can also have thermal segregation because the fines, the heat is usually in the fines and every location there where you see a blemish, there is less fines. So that will be also referred to as thermal segregation. We can also have thermal segregation if we, not, if we don't tarp the material properly or we sit too long. But not all mix segregate. And also if you use the proper insert, you can maintain, minimize segregation by reducing the slope face or the length of this, uh, the, the, the slope face on the pile. Next. Here you can see some thermal profile, uh, which is matching the blemish on the pavement. Next. Next. Okay. There you could see a different insert being used this is more of a polymer mix, so it's more gooey. It sticks together. It, it doesn't roll as much, but we also use the right insert where we minimize the slope of the pile and prevent uh, segregation. Next. So what happens when we have that segregated material flowing under the screen? It changes the internal frictional resistance of the material because we don't have the fines. Generally, when we are compacting the material, the fines act as ball bearings. The asphalt act as a lubricant for the larger stones to move and push the air pockets out. As you can see, <clears throat> the blemish on the right-hand picture shows that there is no fines there. So that means we change the internal frictional resistance, which means we will change the behavior of the screed. More than likely, we will have a dip there. Little or no asphalt, dynamic loading, that will start traveling. Next. And after a few months, you will see surface blemish that looks like this. You can see every truck exchange because we run the insert low at every truck. And that segregated material, the last ton, ton and a half of segregated material flowing under the screed will cause that blemish. Okay. So where are this material coming from? As we show earlier in some of the videos, it could come from running that insert, the hopper insert flow. If we're not using a material transfer and we're dumping trucks with some mix, the larger stones will roll to the sidewall of the truck bed. When the truck dumps and pulls out, those larger stones will be towards the hopper insert. Next. And if you look at this video, you could see clearly the larger stones coming out of the side of the truck bed, right at that point there where the mouse is. And when the truck pulls out, the operator will dump the hopper and those larger stones will get to the middle and then the auger spreads it and creates that chevron that we saw. Next. Now let's look at some blemish that are in the form of a streak, not blushy type. Most of these blemish, these streaks blemish will come when the tractor is delivering the mix to the screen. 
The biggest culprit there is a center line. And then if you don't use the right insert, the larger stones that rolls towards the sidewall of the insert will flow down to the outer flunk conveyor chain and get dropped somewhere from the edge of the tunnel to the bearing hanger, which will be segregation streak B on the picture on the left. So where are those coming from? Let's take a look um, on the next. So the streak in the middle will depend on how we position the flights closest to the auger box. Now keep in mind, not all mix segregate, but if you're dealing with segregated material, it depends on how you position those flights close to the auger box, which we'll show you there in a bit. And then, of course, the streak in the wheel path will come from all the larger stones rolls towards the side, the sidewall of the hopper insert. Next. Now, if you look at this video, you will see that the auger flights are pushing the material over. Is it playing? Our video is not playing. There we go. Our video is stalling a bit, but <clears throat> what's happening is the reverse flight on the left side is pushing, on the right side, sorry, is pushing the material over to the left side. So the segregated material coming out from each tunnel does not concentrate in the middle. You can also have the flights on the left side pushing towards the right side, which is called a push-pull concept. Again, to move that segregated material that's sitting under the auger box. Next. So to really manage segregation, we need to look at all the points of which we handle the material from the plant to the job site, not including managing stockpile segregation. That's a discussion for another day. So from the time we load the truck to the plant to the time the tractor delivers the material to the screed, which is be our last point, we need to focus on the handling for each one of those, starting with the larger stones that rolls to the sidewall of the truck bed during transport. When the truck is loading a material transfer, end of load and start of load segregation, crust will be a different ball game, but that requires proper uh, tarping of the truck. These three form of segregation is before the material transfer. Most feels that if we have a material transfer in the job site, we solve all our problems. But no, we're handling the material again when the material transfer is feeding the hopper insert, as we've seen before. And lastly, when the tractor is delivering to the screen. So with the time we have today, we can't get into the details of each one of these, but uh, we can save that for another day. Uh, next slide. So here we are, we're looking at segregation, as I mentioned earlier, blemish that caused by screed adjustment. Any blemish caused by screed adjustments are usually in a continuous defined streak. So when you look at your blemish, if it looks like it's continuous defined, you can see continuous line, you can see continuous defined shadows, then you know that is screed adjustments. Look at your screed angle of attack, look at your toe point, look for twisted screed, stuff like that, and make sure your extension is adjusted correctly. Next. Now these are blemishes or surface uniformity caused by segregation. It could be continuous like under the auger box, but it's not a defined line. And on the other two pictures, you can see sporadic blemish, which could again be under the bearing hanger or it could be in the wheel pad. Those usually come from your hopper insert if you're, if you're using a material transfer. And then lastly, you can see here, this has a combination of screed adjustment issue and segregation in the middle. So if you see blemish, first you ask yourself, is it created by screed adjustment or is it created by segregation? And you can see from all the videos I showed, if you see the blemish on the pavement, follow it to the screed. If you don't see it there, follow it to the hopper, follow it to the truck, material transfer, you will see the segregated stone and you'll be able to address it. Next. <clears throat> 